Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus is right. Yeah. God is good. He lets us do some pretty cool stuff sometimes. I think I got a couple extra angels on my left shoulder or maybe my right. I don't know, but, but God is good, and, and I just love him so much. You know what's funny is uh, when I filmed that segment, it was for a snowboard movie called Slednecks, secular video, and I was, I was packing my run-in that was just the width of the sled to go off this 1,200-foot cliff, and I was mic'd up, and I kind of forgot that I had a mic on me. And I'm packing this jump and, and I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, you know what's cool is when you made this cliff, you knew that I was going to jump off it. <laughs> and they put it in the video, me praying that too. And then also that last part there where I said, thank you, Jesus. They put that in the video too, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so I just want to share with you real quick my testimony. Uh, I didn't get saved until the age of 30. And I'm 39 now. I know it's hard for you to believe because I'm a sexy middle-aged man. <laughs> but but at, at, at 30, um, I was in Alaska and I was uh, dropped off on top of, of one of those mountaintops. And the helicopter was going to go and film a shot of another rider on a different peak. And so I just had some time to chill and to just kind of look at my surroundings. And I, I looked down the run that was in front of me that I was about to go down. And don't you guys love fresh snow, how it sparkles like diamonds? You know, it's just really pretty. So I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow, this is a perfect run. I look to the right of me, and there's another one. I'm all, whoa, look at that one. It's got a little cliff drop, and like, oh, that, that's a perfect run too. I look to the right of that and see another one, and then I look up, and I just see peak after peak after peak. Uh, Valdez, Alaska, it's just beautiful. Heaven on earth for a skier or a snowboarder. But what I saw was God's thumbprint. In the book of Romans in chapter one, it talks about how um, when we look at God's creation, that we see his handiwork, we see his divine nature, and, and literally we see his thumbprint. And so I, I didn't get raised going to church or anything like that, but I found myself at this place of prayer. And I said, God, I don't know if you're real, but if you are, you sure did a good job on this. So thank you very much, Lord, and, and enjoyed the run. Um, I went home after that trip and I thought, you know what, I've never read the Bible. How can I say that, that it's, it's not truth? I don't even know what it says. No one had ever shared the gospel with me. And so I went home, I bought a, bought a Bible, um, started at the beginning, because I didn't have any Christians in my life to say, you know, why don't you start at the Gospel of John or something? So start at the beginning, yeah, cool, you know, God's creating the universe, and he's speaking things into existence, and I was uh, fired up in that part. And then, how many guys have read the Old Testament? So I got into like Leviticus <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, this is like a phone book. <laughs> and so I started to bog down a little bit. I called a buddy of mine who, who uh, uh, I thought was a Christian and, and he is a Christian. Um, he had never really talked to me about the Lord, but I said, he had just gotten a house in Tahoe where I was living. I said, do you know of any good churches around here? Because I'm thinking about going to church and, and checking it out. And he said, there's a great church down the street from your house called Sierra Bible. And they love to uh, play music and they have a good time and they're non-denominational. And I'm like, cool, that means they don't want my money. So that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> I had no idea what non-denominational even means, but I walked into the church that day and the pastor was preaching out of the New Testament. He was reading the, the words in red, the words of Jesus. And he spoke probably 40 or 50 words and even though I'd never read them, I knew every word that he said like I'd read it a thousand times. And so I, I remember thinking, God, you must be real because I know I've never read this. And at that very moment, I got nailed with the Holy Spirit of God. And I felt my, my heart physically swell with joy and peace and contentment. And I just started to cry. And so like a big baby, I'm in church by myself crying, oh my gosh. Because I, I came to this point of like, God, now I know that you're real. Because right now what you're doing by just touching my heart with your finger is allowing me to feel what real peace feels like. Because even in snowboarding where I had accomplished a lot of cool stuff and made a lot of money and things like that and had kind of what the world could offer me, it was nothing like what God offered me when he touched me with his Holy Spirit. 
So I, that was the day I got saved, and I went home. I, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't say a sinner's prayer. I didn't go forward for an altar call. But what I did do is I went straight home, and I opened up my Bible to the New Testament. I said, I got to read about this Jesus guy. As I started reading about Jesus, um, I saw the story of him ta- talking to Nicodemus. Remember that story? Nicodemus, who's a religious leader, uh, asked Jesus, you know, what I need to do to get to heaven. And Jesus said, you must be born again. And he's like, well, wait a sec. I'm a grown man. I'm like 50, like, or however old he was. How can I be born again? And Jesus said, you won't be born again in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense. The, the spirit of the living God will come and dwell inside of you. And the Bible also tells us that we become new creatures once we're born again. We have new desires And I knew I had new desires. And so as I started reading these different things, they just reaffirmed this experience that I had just had. And so um, I'm here to tell you today that if you're seeking God and if you're wanting to know if God's real, he is absolutely real. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's sitting on his throne right now. And he's allowing things to happen on this earth that sometimes look kind of... uh, um, gloomy, so to speak. I mean, we live in a fallen world. We're all broken people. So we see a lot of jacked up stuff happen. But yet God is allowing this to happen. And he's allowing us to be lights in this world. And that's what he wants us to do.